Welcome to the first screencast in a series that will be covering Martin Fowler's refactoring patterns. The first pattern we're going to cover is in the Composing Methods series, and it's called Extract Method. Now, it's very simple. Essentially, you look for a block of code that could be pulled out into its own method, and you extract it for that purpose. Now, one of the indicators that we normally look for in this is something like this a comment which describes what an upcoming block of code does. Well, usually that comment could be equally descriptive to a method name in and of itself. And in fact, this pattern is so common that Visual Studio has a tool built in to do this for us. So we'll extract this method, call it print details. And now that comment is superfluous. Clean up our spacing. And that's about it for that. So let's take a look at some more interesting examples that differ in a couple of key ways. So at first glance, what we see here are three blocks of code with three comments, essentially each doing its own thing, and so each should be extracted into its own function. The comment itself is usually an indicator that we, we have to describe the code in a more meaningful way, and a function name could do that just as easily. So let's start here with this print banner. This one will be easy. Extract method, call it print banner. Now one thing we notice here is that Visual Studio is making it static this time. Now unless there are instance values that are being used in this extracted function, it's going to prefer to make it static by default. But since these next two are going to be instance methods and I just want to remain consistent, I'm going to go ahead and make this an instance method as well. And of course you notice it also makes it private by default, which is good. That maintains the encapsulation. Let's get rid of that unnecessary comment. And let's move on to our next one. Calculate outstanding amount. We'll do the same with that. This time it's accepting an outstanding amount value, which it's pulling from this local value here, and then it's returning it because it's modifying that same local value. Now another behavior you'll notice about the Visual Studio tool is that when you extract a method, it places it immediately under the current method. It's a matter of personal preference, I think it looks cleaner to keep the methods declared in the same order in which they're used, so I'll drag it down there and get rid of that comment that we don't need. And now let's move on to the last one. This one is just like from our simple example. It expects a value, but it doesn't need to return anything. Call it print details. Get rid of that comment. Again, change the ordering. We're not quite done yet. We've extracted the methods. However, we noticed something when we extracted this method. We noticed that the use of this value, this local variable here that's being passed around, isn't quite clean. So first of all, let's, let's start by moving this to where it's actually used in scope. Print banner doesn't use it, so print banner can be called before we even declare this. And now it becomes kind of apparent that we're setting this initial value and then immediately setting it to a calculated value from this function. So that initial value could really be set inside the function itself. And in fact, if we look in the function, where we're changing that value, we see that we're assigning to a parameter of the function. Now we'll cover that in a later session, but there's another pattern called remove assignment to parameter, where essentially we don't want to modify a parameter that's being passed in to the function. And so instead, what we're going to do is declare this return value here. Uh, a convention that Martin Fowler uses in his book a lot is to just declare it as the name result. 
So let's call this result. And that indicates to us that the result will be returned later. So we'll return it. And of course we'll modify it. And now we see that outstanding amount isn't used at all, so we can remove the parameter, which is also itself a refactoring pattern we'll cover later. The compiler tells us that we need to remove it there as well. And now it's even more obvious that this outstanding amount is set to an initial value and then immediately overwritten. And so we can inline that declaration. Clean up our spacing a little bit. And that's it. That code is refactored and we've extracted our three methods. So that's it for the extract method pattern. Thanks for watching.